Hi, this is Stacy Ho from MediaTek. In this lecture, I will discuss an LTE receiver for carrier aggregation using a two-path bandpass noise-shaping SAR ADC. The outline of this lecture is as follows. First, we'll look at the target application, which is carrier aggregation in LTE. Then we'll discuss what the receiver architecture options are and their problems associated with each. Finally, we'll wrap up with a proposed two-path bandpass noise shaping star ADC that is tailored for this application. There are several scenarios for carrier aggregation in LTE. In the scenario on the left here, there are two contiguous carriers in the same band or intraband. In the middle scenario, there are two non-contiguous carriers intraband. And in the scenario on the right, there are two non-contiguous carriers in different bands, in this case, one in band 8 and one in band 20. The conventional way to receive two carriers is with two independent zero IF receivers, each with its own LNA, quadrature down conversion mixer, baseband low pass filter, baseband ADC, and synthesizer. In other words, every block is duplicated for each carrier. The question is, is there a more efficient way of doing this? An alternative to having two independent paths is a receiver with a single path and a single IF. In this architecture, there is a single LNA followed by a single quadrature down conversion mixer to an IF frequency with the LO placed between the two carriers. This is followed by a second down conversion to baseband. In this architecture, only a single RF synthesizer is needed. The baseband I and Q components are separated by properly combining and subtracting the four components after the IF down conversion. Now, there are two significant problems with this single path, single IF receiver. The first problem is harmonic mixing, whereby harmonics of the IF LO will mix one carrier onto the other. On the left here, you see how the third harmonic of the LO can mix the carrier at the third at three times IF onto the desired carrier. The, process, the second problem is that of imperfect image rejection. Quadrature mismatch will result in image leakage as shown on the right here. A solution to the harmonic mixing problem is to make use of a harmonic rejection mixer. The concept is to create an LO with reduced odd harmonics, thereby mis minimizing the harmonic mixing. The harmonic mixer is shown here as a conventional mixer symbol with an extra ring around it. A typical way to implement a harmonic rejection mixer is with three parallel mixers with offset LO phases, as shown here, and varying LO amplitude. As you can see here in the figure, the middle mixer has an amplitude of root 2. Unfortunately, this does require a VCO to be running at a much higher rate than the LO. An example of a single path, single IF receiver is from Altman in VLSI 2013. Here he uses an analog harmonic rejection mixer followed by baseband low pass filters and ADCs with the INQ components finally separated in the digital domain. Another example is from Sundstrom from ISSCC 2013. He similarly uses analog harmonic rejection mixers but does the INQ separation in the analog domain before the ADCs. A more efficient architecture is proposed here. By making use of a bandpass ADC, the second IF down conversion can be moved into the digital domain. This is called a single path digital IF architecture. The advantage of this architecture is that quadrature mismatch in the second down conversion can be eliminated since it is done all digitally. The harmonic mixing problem still exists, but is now moved into the digital domain. Also note that a bandpass filter preceding the bandpass ADCs is now required. I'll talk more about this later. An enhancement to the single path, single digital IF architecture is made by setting the bandpass ADC sampling rate to be four times the IF frequency. This is commonly known as an FS over four architecture. In this case, the IF generation becomes trivial, simply a multiplication by plus one, zero, or minus one. Furthermore, the harmonic mixing problem now becomes an anti-aliasing problem, requiring band the bandpass filters that were mentioned earlier. Note though that the mismatch between the two ADCs and the two filters here will give rise to image leakage and therefore must be well controlled. 
The sources of IQ imbalance are summarized here. They are quadrature error in the first down conversion, mismatch in the anti-aliasing IF bandpass filter, such as gain and phase mismatch, gain and phase mismatch in the bandpass ADCs, and finally timing skew mismatch in the ADCs. Some of these IQ imbalances are frequency independent and some are frequency dependent, but they all typically must be calibrated either in the analog or the digital domain. To give you an idea of how well controlled the IQ imbalance needs to be, case one here shows a four, minus 46 dB image when there is a 1% gain mismatch between the I and Q bandpass ADCs. Case two on the right here shows a minus 54 dB image in the case of a 10 picosecond sampling timing skew between the I and Q bandpass ADCs. Now let's turn our attention to implementing the bandpass ADC. We will approach the implementation through the use of delta sigma modulators and by drawing on the principle of the generalized empath transform. In the empath transformation, all z terms are replaced by z to the n. This is accomplished in practice by time interleaving n paths as shown in this figure here and described by Yoon and VLSI 2009. In our case, we are interested in creating a bandpass noise transfer function with a notch at fs over 4, since recall that we are implementing an fs over 4 architecture. Given a starting NTF of 1 minus z to the minus 1, setting n equals to 2, unfortunately, does not give us our desired bandpass noise transfer function. But this can be easily fixed. Instead of starting with NTF equal to 1 minus z to minus 1, let's start instead with 1 plus z to the minus 1. Now, when we set n equal to 2, the desired notch is achieved at fs over 4, as shown here. Thus, we now have a bandpass ADC architecture. There are two time relief delta sigma modulators, each of which has an NTF of 1 plus z to the minus 1. The signal band is centered at fs over 4, and each ADC is clocked at fs over 2. Furthermore, the signal band can be easily tuned by changing fs. For example, to achieve an IF tuning range of 60 to 80 MHz, the sampling frequency must be adjusted between 240 and 320 MHz. Note that for a given signal bandwidth, this sampling frequency tuning does result in a variation of the oversampling ratio. Thus, the ADC SQNR must be designed to account for this variation in OSR. So, how is a delta sigma modulator with an NTF of 1 plus z to the minus 1 implemented? It turns out this can be quite simply and power efficiently implemented using a noise shaping SAR ADC. Shown here is the original noise shaping SAR ADC proposed by Friedenberg at ISSCC 2012. He implemented a SAR ADC with an additional quantization error shaping path resulting in an NTF with first-order noise shaping and an STF of unity. One can think of his original architecture as a low-order input feed-forward delta sigma modulator with a 10-bit quant SAR quantizer. As an example, for a 10-bit SAR in an OSR of 4, a SQNR of 75 dBs can be achieved in a 20 MHz channel bandwidth. Using Friedenberg's architecture, two noise shaping SAR ADCs are time and relief to create the two path bandpass ADC. In each path, a high pass FIR IIR loop filter is used to achieve the 1 plus d to the minus 1 noise transfer function that gives us the notch at fs over 4. This high pass FIR IIR loop filter is implemented by taking Friedenberg's low pass FIR IIR and chopping the input and output at the sampling rate. In this simple way, a high-pass, low-pass filter, a high-pass loop filter is created, and the overall bandpass noise transfer function can be achieved. By disabling the chopping, the ABC can be configured to become a low-pass ADC. In conclusion, this lecture has given a short introduction to a single path architecture for LTE carrier aggregation that is enabled by a two-path bandpass noise shaping SAR ADC. Although this architecture has some definite advantages over the conventional parallel path receiver, there are challenges in this architecture, such as the IQ mismatch issues that I mentioned. There are also some other challenges which I have not covered. 
I invite you to dig a little deeper into these uncovered issues. Thank you for listening.